Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. We back in the building, ladies and gentlemen. I go by CEO Peso. Blessed and highly favored. Back at it, man. I got to admit, I had my mans on here earlier. Uh, it was like May. Technical difficulties happened. You know, they was hating on us. Yeah, man, man. But, uh, you, you know, I might have did something slightly different. I don't know. But, my mans, I appreciate you coming back so we can run it back, do it again. Shit happens. If y'all seen your pictures or something like that, that's why the episode didn't drop. But we back at it. So, we got Dayton's own in building. Introduce yourself. Well, I'm Terry the Voice, man. You know, if you, if you know me on the professional side, Terry Matthews. If you know me entertainment-wise, Terry the Voice, man. Like he said, Dayton owns, and I'm proud to be here, man. Damn right, man. What's popping, man? Man, everything, man. You know what I'm saying? You know, as you know, fentanyl just dropped. Fentanyl you dropped, know, man. We on Amazon Prime. We, we on uh, uh, Sheen TV. TV. Yeah, it's yeah. Amazon Prime, uh, Tubi. Uh, it's probably going to be out by the time we put this out, so... You know, we across the platforms. Um, man, Liddy Summer, the premiere, how'd you how'd you like the premiere for Fitting All, man? Uh, the premiere was awesome, man. Just, you know, you know, just seeing not only myself, but the rest of the Dayton cast, man, on big screen like that, man. Yeah, and, man. And it was, you know, produced and shot by and written by Dayton's own, man. So that's just something that, you know, that's epic right there. You yeah. Know, you ain't gonna you it's gonna be kinda hard to duplicate that over again with that amount of, you know, people and talent and just different you know, uh, characteristics and just being people who we are, you know what I'm saying? And it was, at first, I ain't gonna lie, I was like, yeah, I don't know how this was gonna work, you know what I'm saying? Cause, well, well, while we were shooting it, or? Yeah, while we were shooting, I mean, because you, you had oh, some yeah. professional people, you had some street guys, <laughs> you know what I'm saying? You had people who never really act before, then you had some people who were seasoned, and it was like, uh, we're gonna see how this is gonna mesh Yo, together. I never even looked at it like that, but I mean, just because I be working with everybody, and it, it, then they're turning to it like, all right, we gotta just get it done. Yeah. But it is like a lot of different tiers of people that we had. Right. Right. That, yeah, but I mean, I don't know, man. People had an opinion. Some people, you could tell that was first time acting. Some people was naturals. So, yeah, but it was just dope, man, just seeing that shit on the screen, everybody watching it, and it just was like, oh, yeah, we did that, though. Yeah, and then, like, then the love from the city. I think that was another thing. Like, I can't go nowhere now, you know what I'm saying, without somebody, you know, shotting out one of the lines, you know what I'm saying? Like they want Where's Gotti? Yeah, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> or like they favorite one about me is, you know, you know, not my motherfucking sister, not yeah, my sister. Yeah. So you know what I'm Yo. saying? It, it'd be crazy. So every time I didn't, I'm talking about I'd have been at Kroger's gas station. Yeah. And just hear somebody <laughs> yell it out. You know what I'm saying? And real it, tears know, though. That man, that that man, when I seen that scene get done, I'm like, oh, this nigga is really him. I mean, you know, <laughs> you, got, you got to body it, man. You got to bring it out, man. And I, I think that's the great part. What I love about acting, to be completely honest, yeah. you know, it allows you to be you and on a level where there's no judgment. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And so I was able to cry on the scene and nobody better look at me like all oh, that nigga soft. You know man, what I'm saying? Yeah. <laughs> is, but is it was it a weird feeling like to be watching yourself on the screen like? Just at, with everybody else. Or I mean, yeah, yeah, and no. I mean, to be completely honest, I, you know, I've been acting for a while, for years. You know what I'm saying? But never to this magnitude. Right. You know what I'm saying? So I've seen myself, you know, back in the day on, on DVDs and stuff like that. <laughs> but on a big screen like that, that was the first. You know what I'm saying? And on on the professional end, on that level, just never done it before on that level. But you know, I've seen myself act. I've seen myself host shows and different things of that nature. Um, Cause I critique myself to be completely honest. Yeah, you know, what I'm everybody saying? I'll, do. I'll, yeah, I'll go back and watch. You know, even like now, I will host a, you know, a, a event like an appetizer or any other type of event, and I'll see the footage, and I'll immediately go straight to me just to see like what <laughs> could I oh, yeah, do better. This. Like, did I really interact with the crowd? Did I was I too loud? You know what I'm saying? Did I need mm. to speak up? Did I engage? You know what I'm saying? And so, and I critique myself. You know what I'm saying? Because you know I'm, I'm my own challenge. You know what I'm saying? To be completely honest. You know what I'm saying? And, yeah. and I'm you know I'm gonna push myself to the next level that it can be. So that's just how I roll. I was say who better to critique, critique yourself than you? And that means you do a lot of studying and different avenues as well to see. Like so, is it other? Influencers or people that you do study to try to like get characteristics from them to apply to yourself? Um, honestly, no. Uh, and that's something I started years ago um, only because you never want to like you find yourself almost becoming them mm. because you're watching them so much. Like, don't, of course, I, you know, I love the, you know, Denzel's and the Michael B. Jordan's and all them. And I love what they do and they're great at it. Um, but I never try to like really mimic or, you know, try to follow anything that they're doing because I don't ever want to come off as somebody that's like them. I get you know, it. I kind of want to be my own self and, you know, and, and if it's, 
God's grace, then one day I'm gonna make it. You know what I'm saying? And I'm gonna make it because I'm me, not because I'm they, I don't remind them of someone else. Exactly. You your own originality, you just it's me and only me coming through, dominating this part. Totally get it. Good answer though. Cause I mean uh, Yeah, a lot of people probably do do that, then they probably do get like mixed up in mimicking them way too much. Yeah, and then it's it's hard to be set set apart, you know. Yeah. Um you, there'll never be another Denzel Washington. Never. He, like his son is a great actor. Yeah, he would totally never different. be totally different. Yeah. But he wouldn't if any even he if good he tried. Too. He good. Yeah. But if he tried his best, he would still never be Denzel. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if he would have tried to be like his dad, he probably wouldn't have never made it to where he is. Mm -hmm. Because they would just look at it, oh, he's just another. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. if you can't be the another and be better than them, then why would they choose you? Yeah, no, that makes sense. So that's that's just kind of my outlook on it. And I could be wrong. Somebody might be looking for somebody that's something like a Kevin Hart or something like this. And I could be wrong, but I, I, I'm i just going with my gut and knowing that how I feel is that if I'm going to make it, it's going to be because I'm me. Yeah, I feel like that. If, if people are looking for people like that, I think that's just because those are the masses of people who they want to have something like a Kevin Hart production. So they're going to look for a similar yeah. type style person vibe or whatever the case is, but it's each his own. I mean, you got to come in original, stay original though. Absolutely, man. So let's double back real quick, man. Who was the voice, man? Where you raised? Where, how was your upbringing? Let's go back to the past a little bit. Um, who was the voice? Um, the crazy part is that's a two part question. Let's um, go. Because who is Terry the voice and who is Terry Matthews are two totally different people. Well, let's go Matthews first. You know what I'm saying? So ooh, Terry Matthews, born and raised, West Side of Dayton, um, the Soda Bass kid. Woo. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, Allerton Courts. Hard knocks. And, you know, just just grew up. I didn't have the best of life, but I didn't have the worst of life. I think uh the way my mom raised me allowed me to not almost made me seem like I was better than some people to a certain extent Yeah, because she didn't allow me to see so much negativity. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? My mom was on drugs just like most of my friends' moms was on drugs. Right. My dad wasn't there just like most of my friends' dads wasn't there. You know what I'm saying? But I never went a night without eating. Never slept in the house without no lights on. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? So I felt like everything was okay. You know what I'm saying? Because my mom just made sure she took care of home. You know what I'm saying? Now, did we have some bumps in the road absolutely i i remember sleeping on a uh, rta bench with my mom one time Man. you know what i'm saying because she allowed herself to be in a sense you know taken care of by another man and then once he was fed up he put her out and when yeah. he put her out he put me out crumbled down you know That's, what i'm saying and we yo, slept on the on the rta bench one night you know what i'm saying that so, nigga, man. right put yeah, now, yeah. Now, I, I don't know what he's doing his life yeah, now the but, kid too <laughs> damn yeah gee. i mean it was it was i can as an adult now i under kind of stand why he did it i mean they kind of got in the fight you know being real and i did what a son would do you know I, he had my mom on the ground I took that pan straight to the head, you know what I'm saying? Oh uh, yeah, yeah. And I, you know, and at that time as a kid, I'm I don't understand it. But as a grown man, it's like okay, I can see how he can be like y'all need to leave. Yeah, I mean, you, know you, you protecting moms yeah, too. And I'm man. gonna do that. You know what I'm saying? Now, I don't know what led up to the fight. My mom could have been wrong. I don't know. No fucking you, matter. You, you know what I'm saying? But it don't matter. That's my mom. Yeah, yeah, that's I'm coming. My you know what I'm saying? So yeah. you know, it just is what it is. But I feel like things you go through in life makes you stronger. It makes you look at life differently. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And you know, then going on from there, man. Just you know, place to place, moving here and there. You know, because my mom was on drugs. So it was times we we lost housing. You know what I'm saying? I didn't understand it back then of the low-income housing, I, you know, the way it rolled. Right, you right. You know, can't really have company like that, loud music late at night, a fight that can get you put out. Mm -hmm. But I didn't understand that as a kid. You, you know what I'm just saying? But there. I had to go through it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then when I got a little older, then I knew what drugs was and knowing that and all my sisters had moved out by this point you know we all kind of slightly close in age my older sister is like 10 years older than me okay. but it's like a stair step after that you know my mom had five kids four 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 girls and one boy i was the youngest mm. you see what i'm saying so they knew about the drugs and things before i did so they got to kind of escape before i did you know what i'm saying and so yeah. it left me really in the house with her by myself at one point and then i started realizing like oh we got a problem here yeah you know what i'm saying and then I moved in, moved out, moved in with my aunt. She took me in, you know what I'm saying? And I stayed with her and my cousin, who a lot of people thought that was my brother because that's just how close we were. Mm -hmm. And, you know, then living with them and it wasn't no drugs involved, but it still had issues there too. You know what I'm saying? Whether it was arguments, whether whatever the case may be. So I, I didn't escape. I just... You got into a slightly better a Slightly better situation, yeah, right? Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And then, you mean, by the time I... Honestly, by the time I got in high school... Uh, that's when I life was lifing. You know what I'm saying? 
Like yeah. it was just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Surrounded by, by drugs. Now I'm surrounded by drug dealers at this point. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And you know, and I ain't gonna throw no names out there, but you know, living in a situation where I even had to participate and help sell it. You know what I'm saying? I was gonna yeah. ask you that too. Like what was well, I don't know, was it well, was it any temptation to even try it, but then at the same time, like, did you even start selling it? But you, you was on the other end of the spectrum and just start selling it. Yeah. But why know, did that come around? Though? Um, Honestly, it was one of the situations where it was like, I was the only one at the house. Guy mm-hmm. showed up to get some, and I'm like, I didn't know what to do. So then when they got home, I'm like, hey, somebody came, and I didn't know what to do. Wait, but they... You knew what they came for? Yeah. Like, they admitted? Yeah, like, yeah, I knew. They, I mean, they asked. When they knocked on the door, I needed to die. But this you in high school, though. Yeah, I'm in high school. Okay, okay. But oh, I, yeah, didn't so know, you knew. I didn't know how to cut it. And, right. You know what I'm saying? And make sure they got what they needed. Like, uh, I didn't know how to wait. back. Uh, you know what I'm saying? I said, uh, come back. Come <laughs> yeah. back. You know what I'm saying? So then when they got back, I'm like, hey, what do I do? And then he showed me. Like, hey, next time, this is what you do. Put you, you in the saying? game. Man, put me in the game. You know what I'm saying? And then he ran like a bootleg joint. So he wasn't there at night. You know what I'm saying? And so... It was my responsibility at night if somebody came. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And boom, he, you know, he'd break me off. So here I am going to high school, sophomore, junior year with money. And, and in reality, like, I didn't know what to do with the money. Yeah. Never yeah. really had money. You know what I'm saying? So I'm buying everybody Snacks, stuff from lunch, you yeah. know, cookies and pizza being and everything. Guy, else. Being you know what I'm saying? Just being there. that guy. Because to me, my whole life, the way I grew up was, was all about giving back. Mm-hmm. Because people gave to me. So my mindset automatically was, hey, I got to give back to other people. I mean, that's a mature mindset to have even with that, like not knowing what to do with the money. But then at the same time, you you, well, you know, like, shit, I want to make other people happy. Yeah. Yeah. And yeah. Then back then, of course, it wasn't a lot, like to me, it was a lot of money. I'm going to school with, you know, twenty five, forty, fifty dollars. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I'm born it all in one day. You know what I'm saying? Because yeah. I'm, I'm bought him pizza, her pizza, him nachos, her cookies. You know what I'm saying? Every single day. Yeah. yeah. And and then by the by the time I look up, you know what I'm saying, the money gone. But then the next day I'm doing it all over again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So it was like nothing to be like, all right, I got y'all, don't worry about it. You know what I'm saying? Uh, you know, went through that phase, man, and then um honestly kind of hit a wall because found out junior year, well, going into my senior year. My girl at that time was pregnant with my first son. Mm. You know what I'm saying? So now here I am. So like, what's that, like uh, 16, 17? I'm, I was 17 at this 17, point. Yeah. yeah. And, man, it was just like, it was crazy because I didn't really look at school as like a purpose. I was just going. You know mm. what I'm saying? And so now she pregnant and I'm like, oh, I got to graduate. Yeah. I got to I got to get it. So what you doing good in school, though? Nah, you not saw for real. It? Okay. Yeah, nah, I mean, like. To be honest, I mean, you know, we, we years passing now, but I played sports, you know, and I was pretty good, you know what I'm saying? But I was given grades to play because I was, um, you know what I'm saying? And since I was that guy, you yeah. know what I'm saying? And so I didn't, I barely went to class. I stayed in the gym. But you had that connect with the coach. Like, yeah, we, you know what we, what we need them out here on the field. It, 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 <laughs> it was, it was what court. it was. It was when they yeah. turned them grades in, you know, at, at you eligible. At worst, sure. it was all C's. <laughs> but you're, you eligible. But I'm eligible. You know <laughs> yeah. what I'm saying? So it just, I was just in one of those situations, man, where, you know, and I went to a good school, went to Stivers, you know what I'm saying, where most people couldn't even get in that school. Right. You know what I'm saying? Because you had to audition. You didn't even get in. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? But I went, for, I went for visual arts. I went for choir. And I just took advantage of an opportunity that was in front of me. You know what I'm saying? It was, to me, it was like Saved by the Bell. It was, I was on my Zach Morris type. You feel know what I'm saying? So, it was just fun, you know what I'm saying? You know, and then I was able to graduate, but I, like when I tell any kid I mentor now, man, don't do what I did. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? My senior year, here I am going to school. I had to stop playing sports. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? I had to go to work. I had to go to night school just to graduate. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I had Doubling to get a tutor yeah. because you had to have a certain amount of credits to graduate. Yep. You know what I'm saying? I was missing an English credit, so I went and got a tutor. I had failed math, so here I'm taking uh, night classes doing math. All while I'm going to school and working. I'm about to say because you you don't go to regular school, you working, but then night classes. Man, that's a busy fucking schedule for a 17 yeah, and going yeah. into 18 year old. It was though. just crazy, man. So I just had to do what I had to do, and then by the time my son was born, which was in March, a lot of them times I I was taking him to school with me. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Just to get it done. I'm talking about he car seat right next to my desk. You know what I'm that saying? It's deep. And like, they, they was cool with that. Yeah, I mean, because you think back then nobody wasn't having kids. Eh, right. I mean, if they did, you went to Grace A. Green. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But still, you, like, you, but you, but you bringing them in there. Yeah, and the principal was cool with it. Like, no, we getting you up out of here. You're graduating. So she didn't mind. You know what I'm saying? And then my mom stepped up, and then she started watching him. You know what I'm saying? So that helped me out. But, 
you know, thank God I was still able to graduate from high school, move on and kind of do my thing. Then at that point, I just started working. Cause yeah. now I got to take care of them. You know what I'm saying? Yep. And, you know, I totally forgot about school. Didn't think about going to school. Most definitely, you know, and it was just was college was. is out of out uh, of the question. Yeah, for sure. You know what I'm saying? And it was crazy. Like I, people think I'd be joking, but bro, when I was in high school, like you could take, you know, like you take the trash bags, like the nice size one, like out of the cafeteria. Yeah, it you can feel it up with how many letters and stuff I was getting from colleges to run track or oh, play word. basketball. You can feel like you can feel the bag. So. You was getting dinner full rides or whatever the case is, but you well, they were just, weren't gonna give me the full ride because the grades wasn't there. But but still, but they were, the they offerings. Was, yeah, they was letting me know like, hey, we're interested. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. Now, of course, it was always gonna come down to the grades if I would have got the scholarship. You know what I'm saying. But it was the fact that they were interested was was is what enlightened me. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying. I think one of my greatest accomplishments of it was I remember getting a letter asking did I want to run in a junior junior Olympics in like France or something like that. You know what I'm saying. And uh, that would have been intriguing. It, it, it would have been my senior year. They, yeah. they, they was inviting me for the next year, but I didn't play those sports my senior year because I, you know, wanted to make sure I, you know, could provide for my son. Because my girl, she was actually a year behind me, so she was a junior. I was a oh, senior. So you had to make sure you step up, yeah. step in. And then we had support. You know what I'm saying? Her mom and them was fantastic. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. But I never wanted to feel like they did it all. So I was at least trying. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, uh, but they was great support. You know what I'm saying? Without them, man, I honestly. You know, we wouldn't have done it. We wouldn't have made it. You know Man. what I'm saying? Then me and her stayed together. She was able to go on, finish high school, go on to college. You know what I'm saying? And by this time, we had two more kids. You know what I'm saying? Mm. And we got engaged. She was able to go off and get her master's. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, I was trying to hold down the house. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, and it worked for us in that moment. You know what I'm saying? Like, it, it, it worked. It didn't work long term, obviously, because, you know, I said X. But, you know what I'm saying? In that moment, it what our system worked for us. You know what I'm saying? So, I'm that, and then that, honestly, that's kind of what started Terry the Voice, to be completely honest. Because now I was looking at different avenues to make money. You know Besides saying? just working the regular working, gig and yeah. everything, yeah, and that started. Uh, you know, shout out to my guy Jay Jones, Platinum Plat, uh, uh, Jay, Platinum, uh, yeah, chef. Yeah, 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 man. So he was looking to throw throw parties, and he was like, "Terry, I gotta have you," and I'm like, "Cool, I got your back, bro. Let's do it." You know what I'm saying? Just and, just on the the rant, like he 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 just knew he wanted you. Yeah, he just to knew he wanted he wanted me to be a part. Like we had a whole little crew. We had our own DJ. And everything. And so we were sitting around the table and I'm like, all right, well, what I'm gonna do? Because hey, we got it. Okay, you gonna cook. We got the DJ right here. <laughs> right. We got the photographer right here. Yeah. He doing security. Okay, what's my role? You know what I'm saying? He mm -hmm. was like, Man, you the funniest out of the crew, man. I want you on the mic. Period. Simply. And I'm like, Well, let's do it. You know what Yo, I'm saying? So doubling back real quick, you say you had the audition to go to Starbucks. So yeah. what was your audition? What, what was um, you? I did visual arts. That's something that was my first way to get in. Okay. Um, I did visual arts. You know, I still draw every once in a while, but uh, they Stivers kind of burnt me out, so I kind of put it down. <laughs> um, but honestly, I draw now. Honestly, sometimes like out of frustration, like if I had a rough day, yeah, you know what I'm saying, or I'm mad about something, or sad about something, or my mind just all over the place, it calms me. But that so, but that was just like a natural, yeah, this, talent, yeah. just drawing. Yeah, it just, okay. You never went to school for it. It's just. I knew I wanted to go to Stivers because my sister went to Stivers, my cousin went to Stivers. I was like, well, I'm going to. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And I like bump it. So I just started drawing. You know what I'm saying? And like my mom could draw. You know what I'm saying? But I just did it. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I made it in. Then by the time I got to high school, I was like, well, I want to do choir too. They're like, mm -hmm. well, you got to audition. All right, cool. I went in there, auditioned, and <laughs> I made it. Uh, all right, man. So what does your resume consist of? Because you have a lot of accolades and Eric, like, what what all do you do? Let's let's break it down. Oh, we Lord. still talking. Well, we went from uh, Terry Matthews to Terry the Voice, but let's just talk about your list of things, the ranges uh, that you can take it to. Um, of course, acting. Yeah, uh, for sure. You know, I, I sing a little bit. I don't really sing no more. I think God kind of took some of my talent away <laughs> when I when I stopped singing. You know, but I can still hold a note. Uh, I actually used to rap too. I used to rap. Okay. Uh, I used to rap. Then I did gospel rap. Um, draw track basketball. Uh. Man, what else? Uh, Jesus. I mean, I do a little mm -hmm. bit of everything, man. God has just blessed me to be able to just do multiple things a lot easier than most people. Right. So what may become a Terry the Voice stand out is like, all right, this is what I'm full-fledged running with compared to everything else that you was tapping into. Um, honestly, being Terry the Voice is where I, I'm able to be m me the most out of anything. Mm. Like when I'm acting, 
I'm I'm portraying a role that yeah, someone you're wants me to something do. Else. Yeah. So whether it's a cop, whether it's a drug dealer, whether it's a father, whether it's a pastor, I'm playing what they want me to do. Yeah. When I'm hosting, I'm completely just Terry. You know what I'm saying? Big personality. I, yeah, big personality. Yeah. Like my cousin says the thing, and he's said it for years. He was like, "Man, you are like blessed to be able to say things to people that most people can't say. Like mm. you can legit look somebody in their eye and be real with them and say something that normally they would get mad if somebody else said it. Yeah. But he like you just got that charisma where somebody is like they can't get mad. They was like, "Oh, I, it's just Terry." Not to piggyback, but I feel like I I have that type of characteristic because. It's not like they don't take it serious, but it's they just know that it's not in a harmful manner, right? Of judging or anything yeah. like that. Though. It's so genuine. Can, yeah, yeah, absolutely. It's, it's I, genuine. I can understand. You know what I'm that. saying, or if I even if I say I can be serious about it, and they know it's genuine. I'm not mm-hmm. judging. I know none of that. Or I can say it with humor, and now they laughing about and it. And still not hurting them. You're still or, not hurting them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And he was like, "Dude, you just got it." You know what I'm saying? And you know, so. That's why I like with Terry the Voice hosting events, man, they, I'm so comfortable. And people are like, man, how do you get up there? And it don't matter the size crowd. I'll do it in front of five or 5,000. Mm-hmm. And I'm going to give you the same thing no matter what. Yeah, just like an artist, performer, whatever. Like, just crowd interact. Because I seen it firsthand for the first time. Shouts out to Rick Sexton. Um, you was doing it there. And I, I say it was like good 60, 70, 80 people in there. Yeah, and, yeah. And, yeah, you was just very, you know, into the crowd. You know, the interactions with everybody. And I'm like... It, mind you, I remember just seeing you on set, and then right. you, it just be it, you know sometimes it blow your mind like damn so damn he hosting too, yeah. and then it makes sense after knowing you because you got a vibrant character about yourself. I'm like oh man, this nigga know what he's doing. Yeah, I mean it's just it's crazy man. Like people people ask me all the time, well how do you do it? And and I, I like I don't I don't have the recipe for it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I tell about like, you know it's been some people who like man I wanna I wanna just come to shows. I wanna see you do it. You know what I'm saying? And, Shouts out to that support. And I'm like, hey, just come and watch me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And they've been able to, they, they, they start hosting events and doing things. You know what I'm saying? And I'm like, hey, man, just if you see something you like, then go grab it and let's go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I said, but me, I'm just, like you said, I'm, I'm so personal with the crowd. You know what I'm saying? I'm going to pick something and 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 I'm a key in on it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. Like, for example, oh, that's one I didn't mention. You know, I do mime and stuff like that, you know, with the face paint, with the gospel songs. I do that, too. Uh, okay. <laughs> but when I do that as well, every time before I go, even before I get in front of the congregation, I always say, well, God, show me somebody who needs it more than me. Mm. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And yeah. every time it happens. No different when I'm hosting an event. God, show me the person that needs this laughter more than I do. And then you just... Right. And I get on stage, and as I'm introducing myself, I'm scanning the crowd. Yeah. And I always at least got to show me one person to that, interact that, with that needs it. Get them a hell of a, hell of a fucking yeah. memory, hell of a time. Because most people, you know, we all go through things in life. And when we go, we still spend money and go to events. Mm-hmm. You know, this guy may just got fired. You know what I'm saying? This girl may just got cheated on by her husband. Yeah, you know, Whatever the case before, may be, whatever. anything. And I'm able to make that person escape. From whatever they went through. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? And I feel like that's my job when I'm hosting something. I was just going to ask that. Do you feel like it's a job or a necessity? Like, as you go up there and obviously host the event, but at the same time, still scanning for, like, who needs this more than me? That's yeah, pretty dope. And, and that's that, that's how I got to look at it. You know what I'm saying? Because if I make it about me, I'm going to mess up. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's just how I, t- I tackle it. You know what I'm saying? So now, you know, then when you start talking about Terry the Voice, that's just kind of how it happened. That's why I stuck with it because I feel like that's, where I'm being me and my genuine self, but I'm also still giving God his glory because I'm going to find somebody that needs it. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So that's why I love to do it. You know what I'm saying? And I, you know, now don't get me wrong. I have been slowly backing off, not hosting so many events. Cause I've been doing this for so long, man. It's like, I get tired. Yeah. T- tired of just doing it or it's not really becoming like a challenge anymore or with that, with a certain level of excitement. I think it's a little bit of both. You okay. know what I'm saying? I think on one end, I think if I had maybe bigger events to do, you know, I wake up more excited to do them. Yeah, like shoots the center or yeah, I, I think or you know, some, yeah, yeah, I, I, I get my it. pep and my step will be a little more there. Yeah, but just to, you know, somebody say, hey man, I'm having a party. It's gonna be about a hundred people, hundred fifty. We need you to come host. All right, cool. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. <laughs> All right, cool. But I, no, but I'm <laughs> still gonna was, give it to you. Yeah, because my name is still on the line. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's the same I do with like videos or, or or films or whatever the case is. Like, 
like I was talking to my mans earlier today about it and I was looking at some work I recently did and I'm just like, I don't know, man, like I don't know how I feel about it. it you know, it, it took me no not not too much time to edit it, shooting it, because it was just like, okay, I got this. Yeah. And he was just like, bro, this shit fire. I'm just like, I don't know, bro. <laughs> yeah, it's like I, it ain't hitting me like it used to, but I have to be enthusiastic as I'm doing the edit, as I'm doing the shooting, because my name is on it. Mm -hmm. So I can't come on there dry, like, oh, here we go. It's like, nah, you gotta control the room, control the set, and that's what we do. All right, so First, I want to ask you, it's a two-part question. Well, no. Yeah, it's two parts, but I got another question after that. Well, no. right, I'm going to ask this first. So, with being the personality that you are, how do you handle when you got off days, bad days, when you don't feel like doing shit, but you still got a responsibility? Because you, I, I feel like a lot of what you do on your daily is interacting with a lot of people, but then, and then with being the voice. So, how do you get out of a funk or a, a weird space to where I got to go in here and, you know, get the shit going honestly you you never really get to escape it um that's for me to handle when i'm on my in my long time you know what i'm saying um like to be completely honest man like i done did shows and like i said so like i was talking about how like i get on that crowd and somebody out there might have been going through something right i legit remember doing the show and me and my wife at that time had legit just was like it's over and, you know, that very next day, I'm on stage. You know what I'm saying? So. And that's in the back of your head. It's in the back of my head. You know what I'm saying? Sure. Now, in that moment when you end it, you know, we men. Well, well, fuck it then. It's over. You know what I'm saying? Then the next day, you be like, damn. You're going to cry in the car. Shit, this shit really is over. Yeah, yeah, and then yeah. 20 minutes later, I got to go hit this stage and make some people laugh. Yo, but ain't that weird though how it hit like, man, fuck this shit and then like yeah, six these, hours later it's like, like Did I really say that God shit? Goddamn, like this shit actually I did. I said that stupid <laughs> shit. Right. Like, like and, and, and the crazy part, I still even find myself. I mean I'm laughing at your situation, but, but it's, it's real it's though. Fucking like, crazy though. Even like to this day, like, you know what I'm saying? And that was shoot, it's almost crazy. that was over two years ago. Yeah. I still find myself even at even now after I realize that I say stupid shit in the moment. Yep. I still say stupid shit you now you in the react. moment. Like, you know what I'm saying? And, you know, and it comes back to haunt you. You know what I'm saying? And that's why I, I really try my best to self-regulate. You know what I'm saying? And don't open my mouth right away. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I'm getting a little better. You know what I'm saying? To the point where I be wanting to say something like, mm. Yep. Yeah. Go and breathe. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and then I try to wait before I react or say something. Because if I say how I really feel in that moment, it's, yeah. it's, it's, it's not really how I feel That's how I feel in that moment Because I'm angry You acting off a reaction Yeah I'm angry So yeah. I'm most definitely giving you angry I'm not giving you The like, genuine me Right Like you, the actual like logical answer Of what it should be it, Rather than Exactly No difference yeah. from like you said You know So when I hit that stage Whatever anger I've been feeling No matter how bad the day been No matter how this has went on I have to push it aside and be like, let's get it done. Let's get it done. Yeah. I mean, that just come with the life. That's that, the life we chose of being, you know, in front of people or being the, the head of doing something. I, I, I would do this. I go through the same shit. I'm, I come through fresh off an argument or some dumb shit. And it's just like, can't let that shit affect you know what our profession is, mm -hmm. motherfucker. But this nigga peso was I'm, dry as fuck. What's the, the crazy part about it? And I still got the inbox right now to this day. This chick inboxed me. She had just saw me host an event. Told me how great I did. The very next day, inboxes me and says, "But I'm looking at this picture of you, and I can tell you're going through something. You're hurt about something." Mm. And I just had to keep it real with her, like. Damn, you got me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, you saw me Friday night kill the show. You saw me take a picture at the show. I posted on Facebook. The next day, Saturday, she commented. She didn't comment it on. She, you know, she, I think she just hearted it. Then she Damn. inboxed me yeah. like, I see the pain in your eyes. That's so crazy that it, it shows like that, even though we try to mask it so much. Yeah. But the slightest still shot or whatever, it, is, it, it exposes you. This ain't, yeah. this ain't you. Yeah, it exposes you like yeah. like I tell people all the time you know what I'm saying 
and and I used to hear it, you know what I'm saying, in a past relationship. She used to say it. I don't want Terry the voice. I want Terry Matthews. Mm-hmm. I don't you gotta, need. You got to have a clear separation. I don't you. need the shell. I don't need you being a comedian. I don't need none of that. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I need Terry Matthews. And sometimes I'm gonna be out. Sometimes it's hard to turn it off. You know what I'm saying? Because at the end of the day, I'm still a people pleaser. Mm-hmm. So it comes off as the same thing. Yeah. Because my, I feel like I'm a people pleaser. Like if I see you hurt, it doesn't matter if I'm hurting. I'm about to try to figure out how we can fix your hurt. Yeah, it's a, it's a natural instinct. Of yeah, this. it's a natural it, instinct. Yeah, it's you. It's your character. Yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? And, but, you know, I, I now understand what she was saying years ago. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? So, therefore, it just is what it is. Yeah, it takes time in to marinate moment, yeah, in. And, maturity. I mean, yeah. let's be out, man, as, as men, man, we want to say all the time, oh, we, you know, we this, we that. Man, I don't think most males hit really mature status you know, if you're just talking about strictly age, not by experience, not by none of this, I'm gonna say honestly by 35. Hey, I'm 35. Like I you, swear to you, I just had an epiphany maybe like a month or two ago of yeah, like you, you, we're not mature yet. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So you know, you and you got to think about it. We get married early because you know we feel like that's what we're supposed to do. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying? We're taught two ways: get bitches. Then when you find the right one. You treat her right and marry her. Yep. That's what we're taught. Mm. We're, we're not taught to do this, do that. No, we're taught get on them bitches. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? At an early age. Early as age. As if that was just like that the was, flyest shit to yeah, do. Yeah. Yeah. Like that was all right. That's stressful. That, yeah. That's the stupidest thing they yeah. ever taught us. But then when they when that right one come along, this is how you supposed to go ahead and wife her up. Nobody never told us all the blueprints in, in between. No one gave us the blueprints after you didn't married her, yeah. and that's why you. We and blow then you learn it as you go with other different personalities with all these other women, and it's just like you don't even know what the fuck you want or how you're supposed to. Uh, you, you don't even know who them. you are, right? You yeah. know what I'm saying because we're so much for everybody else, you don't know your own identity. Yep. So that's why I say 35. You know what I'm saying, and then like I'm I'm 42 now, and um, I'm really just now getting into like knowing who Terry really is. Like I real talk, but I wanted to I wanted to see a psychiatrist, man. Like and it was it blessed me. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? Like, he really opened my eyes to let me know, like, why I've done people wrong. Why yeah. I act the way I do. Why I respond the way I do. And what he told me, in a nutshell, is I do not get over pain and what people have done to me. I hold it. And then in return, I end up retaliating and not knowing that I'm retaliating. And that, and that's only holding you back. It's only holding me back. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And then, man, once I had that conversation with him, man, and this was probably a little over a year ago, man, like, my Shift change. Yeah. You know, and I, I really appreciate you like admitting that too at your age of like acknowledging that. Because like I said I was I was going through that, you know, like, like I said, a month or two ago and thinking like like damn I'm thirty five, but then it's like it's not too late to still develop a good sense of maturity. Yeah. Like it ain't no telling when it's gonna happen. Some motherfuckers might get it when they're twenty nine or the yeah. case is, but in certain areas I was mature because I had kids early. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. I, I moved out and had my own apartment by the time I was I think I was six I was sixteen. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? I had my own apartment. But mentally though. But like, mentally I was not mature. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like it was so many immature areas. And emotionally. And emotion, especially emotionally. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then now as I'm older and I'm looking back on it like Damn, I was immature. Mm. Well, I was doing some stupid stuff. You know what I'm saying? And but now here I am, still making mistakes, but I'm acknowledging the mistakes I make. And you got and, a chance to make it right. Bro. And I got a chance to make it right. And most likely, if I make a mistake now, I'm not gonna make that same mistake again. Right. And now, that's because difference. it's embedded in you now. It's embedded in me. Yeah. So, and, and my goal is I always be better, not only for myself, for my kids, for the kids I work with in the schools, kids I mentor. So, you know, it's not just about me. Mm-hmm. So now I'm recognizing. That every step I take, there's somebody walking behind me trying to follow in those steps. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And where am I gonna lead them to? Am I gonna lead them to the mud that they can't get out of? Or am I gonna walk on a on a on a on a solid pavement where they can actually walk on and follow me? Mm-hmm. You see what I'm and saying? Build and build their so, own path. Yeah, and build, then eventually start to be able to build their own path. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? But until they can, they're gonna follow my steps. Oh. You know what I'm saying? Am I going to send them to the sinking sand or am I going to send them to the concrete where they can stand tall? They need that concrete, you know yeah. So it just is what it is, man. And, and Terry Voice has allowed me to be that person in a funny way. Mm-hmm. He allowed me to be that person in a serious way. You know what I'm saying? You know, Terry Voice done fed communities, fed families. 
know what I'm saying? Put Christmas toys under people's Christmas tree. You yeah. know what I'm saying? Like Terry the Voice has done that. Terry the Voice has also made people laugh, made people cry. You know what I'm saying? And I've been able to do that by that personality, by that character. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, like I said, it's this winding down, you know what I'm saying? Because, you know, I, I've missed out on so much being Terry the Voice. Like, I mean, like what though? Like My the, kids. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, hosting this event and not being to be there with them at night, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. And I know a lot of that also is due to the fact that, you know, I'm on, I'm going to always try to be a provider. So I'm going to work two, three jobs. You see what I'm saying? But you know, when I look at it, I can be like, man, if, if I, if I wasn't hosting all this and doing all that and I was more available, I would actually save some money anyway. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So that's just kind of how I look at it, man. I'm just, I'm doing a shift. You know what I'm saying? In my life where I'm just, I just know that, you know, Terry's voice will always still be around. You know what I'm saying? I, don't, I, I don't, can't go nowhere. I mean, you know, I can't. You know what I'm yeah. saying? It's, it's embedded <laughs> at this point. But, you know, one, I can't allow Terry the voice to control Terry Matthews' life, but I also can't allow Terry the voice to take away from the lives of other people that want to be in my life. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Whether that's my kids, whether that's, you know, girlfriend, whatever the case may be, because there's going to be that day when I get into another relationship mm -hmm. and I can't make those same mistakes all over again. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, you know, and that's just what I'm looking forward to. You know what I'm saying? And that's why, like, I think that's why I'm so excited about life. I feel like, you know, I'm at a place where, like, my the next relationship like they they gonna get a great you know, you know what you're doing yeah, yeah. they gonna they gonna, they gonna get they gonna get the type of person that any ex would be like I wish he was like that mm -hmm. when I had him because I'm realizing I was fucked up <laughs> like, now, but now becoming a, like that's why I'm telling myself just becoming the best version of yourself all yeah. that matters or I got way too deep in it I'm like man if it's somebody out there in another universe that's a greater version of me I need this mm -hmm. I need to get to that you need to get to like it. Yeah. period ASAP <laughs> like ASAP. <laughs> ASAP but not nah, but it do sound like. Uh, you know Terry Matthews and Terry the Voice. It's a thin line, but I think you actually like you got a slight balance with it at this. Yeah, point. yeah. At this point, yeah. You know, I struggled for years. You know what I'm saying? Of working too much and knowing when to turn it on, turn it off. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like even the kids I work with at the school now. Like the first very first day of school was yesterday. Mm -hmm. So at least ten kids came up to me like. They call you Terry the Voice, or you was in the movie, or you did this, and I'm like, yeah. They was like, I didn't know you did that, and I'm like, that's what, you know. And then you a, just did uh, shouts out to Yellow Pain. You did, did that, yeah. I did the uh, uh, play the cop in his uh, yeah. his rap video as well. So some of the kids saw that, and uh, I'm just glad they're able to see me in a positive light. You right. know what I'm saying, um, you know, not saying the school ain't a positive light because it is, but most kids need to see something other than just school. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Every kid is not going to go to school getting A's and B's and then go off to college and do this and then work for this, you know, five fortune company and do all. That's not every kid. Yep. There's a kid out there that wants to be an actor, that wants to rap, that want to sing, that want to do poetry, that want to act and do all these different things. And I feel like by me at least still owning that and showing them it's never too late is going to encourage them. And it's not impossible. It's not impossible. Like, because I, when I was doing even videography, I was one of the first people around and motherfuckers looking at me crazy. Like, I would have never thought picking up the camera would take me to where it took Man. me now. But it's just like, people, even my son see it doing now. Now he, I, I need to download CapCut. I need more YouTube content. It ain't affecting his work, but I'm showing him like, hey, yeah, yeah, you know, you stick to the school, no, whatever. But no different than playing a sport. Right. You know what I'm saying? Yep. Like, if your child is in school, but he like basketball, you are gonna put him in camps. You are gonna send him this. You are gonna send him that. Mm -hmm. Do the same thing in areas that benefit that child because a lot of times we try to give things to our child because we want them to be like us. Right. Every kid don't want to play basketball. Every don't. kid don't want to rap and do this. Some kids want to do things that's out of the ordinary. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? And you have to invest I didn't want to work a gig. Yeah. I didn't want to work a factory job. I did, like, man, I was like, fuck this shit. Man, I tried it. I, man, I, oh, I, I, man. I tried it. I had to do it. It just was like, nah, that, my life ain't lifing with this shit, yeah. bro. I didn't really, I think I lasted like Maybe a summer, like I mean, it was over after that, like because I that wasn't me. Man, I was in a uh, temp agencies, boy, every summer, uh, all seasons. Right. Like you know, I was like, man, yeah. fuck this shit. But um, so Terry the voice you said is is you know slightly scaling down a tad bit for your reasonings. But what about the acting? The acting, I, I don't think that would ever go nowhere. Um, I feel like we need you. I feel like that's we, where I started. Need you. Before there was a Terry voice, I was acting. Right. I was already doing it. You know what I'm saying? Shouts out to Martin Shackleford. He was like, as a kid, like took me under his wing. Mm. You know what I'm saying? And 
you know, he had a group called Black Brothers Involvement and Black Sisters Involvement. And we would do motivational skits. And that's how it started. We would do them at churches, programs, wherever. And that's how everything even started. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And that's where I did my first crying on the stage. You know what I'm saying? And it just took off from there. I'm talking about we were traveling, like as little kids, like traveling, doing state skits. State to state. State to state. Yeah. I'm talking about this college, that this church, different place. Man, we performed in Atlanta during the Olympics. Like all type of stuff like that. Large like, crowd. Like I tell people all the time, like when you remember the Sister Act movie? Yeah. When they had the whole competition at the end. Mm -hmm. That's a real competition. They used to hold that competition. We as our group. Y'all was actually it. doing it. We was doing it. Yeah. And then it was crazy that the year that they recorded for the movie, we were supposed to be in it and Shaq yeah. pulled us out. Because Shaq? Yeah. Marlon Shaq for he pulled us out. He was uh -oh. our leader. I thought he <laughs> Oh, you talking about Shaq Diesel? Yeah, I'm like, what the fuck? <laughs> nah, Shaq, ah, he, nah, right. he didn't do that. But yeah. Uh, yeah, man, he pulled us out. One of our lead singers had got pregnant. And oh. that was totally the opposite of what we were preaching about and doing in our skits. Yeah, contradiction. And he pulled us out. And the crazy part about it is we would have won because we won all the years before. Right. The team that won was on the Sister Act show. So we, that would have been us out of Dayton, hey, Ohio. Yo. That would have been imagine us. that sequence of events. Hands down, we would have been on. We would have been in the movie because we would have won. Yeah, because we hadn't been losing. We won every year. Yeah, you know what I'm saying? Like Damn. it was just crazy. You know what I'm saying? Like uh, I don't know. You know, D. Shack, Dante Shack of Ford. You know, he rapped, do his thing. Mm. He was part of. He was like one of the youngest ones. He was in the group. You know what I'm saying? Now Dante at that time had like a photographic memory. Dante had like, like I can say my ABCs backwards right now, and I've been able to do it over the years because he taught us. Yeah, Dante was maybe four or five years younger than me mm -hmm. and here i was like at that time maybe 12 yeah so i mean like he was six, like six seven and he knew his abc's backwards then that's an extensive he could say them in the same rhythm of going forward extensive teaching he could say them back fluently like shaq would be like all right look this is this is this is what we're gonna talk about give us a piece of paper dante would sit there read the paper 15 20 minutes later put the paper down just know the whole and know the, the whole, whole thing joint. Yeah, and here we are older than him and we couldn't do it like I mean, we, we eventually got it but not in the time he was doing it like 20 minutes or yeah, I don't need it no more and that's why he was able to go on do the Apollo he was able to go on he met Oprah he was on Oprah Winfrey, Oprah Winfrey show because he was just that talented he was mm -hmm. part of our group and that's why one of the reasons why and then of course shout out to all the singers and stuff that was part of our group Yeah, you know the John Nettas and you know Rondell and all people like that that you know Kamiko rest in peace Took us to the next level to the point where we was winning these competitions. I'm talking about killing them. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And then when Marlon Shackleford pulled us out, and then we found out the group that won that year was on, was on Sister Act. Oh, man, he went crazy. Ooh, you know what I'm saying? But I that believe was, it. That was part of my acting. Sister Act was huge. Yeah. And that's why I, said I would never let go of acting. Yeah. I would never. Because I, I can see me, I can see me still. I can see me 50 years old still doing the acting scene. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like, like our, our dude from Dayton, Ohio, that played in the shot. Well, uh, he's still playing um, in the shot. Uh, something uh, Cook. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, Curtis Cook. Curtis Cook. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, you know, I, and I know his nephew Daquan. You know, that crazy Daquan was one of my first mentors. It was crazy. Yeah. I'm in mentees, mm. and um, and I had him at Dunbar. But like, look at his age. He ain't been, yo, bro. He came out of nowhere. That's what kept me going. Like as far as just like I, I, dream chasing in a sense because. I read something and it was like, yo, he just elbowed and get his break till he was like 43. Yeah. Like all these actors, yeah. which is like cult favorites now, they've been grinding. They've been grinding. But Behind they, the scenes. Yeah, but they got it going at an age. And I'm like, you ain't too young to do shit. Yeah, yeah like you, you ain't too young and you ain't too old. You know what I'm saying? Go get it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? And that's why, you know, I think over these next maybe five years, I'm really about to hit acting hard. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I'm, I'm not going to turn down no opportunities. I don't care how small the role is. I don't care if I just got to walk in the door and lay the mail down on the table and that's it. Build that now resume. I'm going to lay it down with so finesse. I'm going to take <laughs> yeah. that mail like, shh, pow, pow. <laughs> right. They're going to be like, hey, he was nah. serious about that. And that's what it's about. You know yeah. what I'm saying? And I'm going to grind. And then, you know, if God opened that door, I, I'm, I'm taking it. You know yep. what I'm saying? Whatever. If they say, hey, man, listen, you, the whole summer, we, you got to be in L.A. The whole summer, I'm gonna be in LA. You're definitely gonna be on my editing you know platform because we, back, I'm, I'm diving into the film so much because, like I said, I'm always gonna love music videos. I'm gonna love, you know, doing weddings, events, whatever. But man, it's something about this film. Mm -hmm. Like I was telling Jason, I'm just like, man, it ain't no better feeling of like all the hard work we did in time, and then it's just a sea of people in here that's watching two hours of it, and right. they, and they love it, and it they took us. It. 
months. And I'm just years, like, if I'm, you think about, oh, yeah, I'm, you, well, I'm talking about editing, yeah. but even years of shooting, and I'm just like, it was all worth it. Yeah, like the crazy part about it, when we, my first scene for Fit and All, when we first did it, was before the pandemic. What was the, wait. The, the very first scene is not even in the, in, it's not even on the show. We, what we was it? It, it was uh, when I met the guys in the street, and I they had to explain to me what was going on. No, nah, that isn't it. It is, we you walked that? up, you was like, oh yeah, what's up guys? And they was like, yeah, we got the informant to wear the wire. God damn, that was, whoo, shit. Hey, think about how long ago that yeah, was. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That was like, that, I mean, like 20? It had to be, because it was before the pandemic. Yeah. So it had to have been like 2020. Yeah, whoo, yeah, that's in there, but it's so, it's it, like so 15 so, seconds. Yeah. <laughs> and the crazy part about it is, I haven't, like I watched it at when we showed it at the movies. But, you know, I was still in that mode of, you know. Nah, it was an experience. Though. Yeah, it was an experience. And I'm still yeah. making sure everybody good. Like, yep, you know what I'm yep, saying? Like, yep. aren't y'all good? You need anything? You, everybody straight? You know what yeah. I'm saying? I was still in that mode. You know what I'm saying? I haven't been able to just sit back and really just. Like, just watch really, it. Yeah, yeah. You know what I'm saying? And uh, and it's coming. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I'm going to watch it one day where I'm really just going to be able to just zone everything out. Like, you know, they want us to show, you know, because I work at 937. Shouts out to my peoples. You know, we, we going to show it there on one of the big screens one day and just invite some people out. Uh, All right, you let me know when that goes down. To do, you know what I'm saying? Just to kind of, you know, because there's a difference between watching it with people who love what you do and then watching it with strangers. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's a complete difference. You got to get the, uh, what is it? Um, You know, from the consumer's eye. Yeah. Just see how they see. It's just something like, oh, what's this? Let me check it out. And you know, I got I got a couple of people inbox me, and I could tell it wasn't biased. It was just like, nah, they really rock with it. Just yeah. just from not our eye of like critiquing or anything, because I was watching Absolutely. it like, oh, fuck, I wish I would have. Yeah, because we we seen stuff something. different. Yeah, like, even when one of the scenes I did, I think uh, when I was waiting on the porch for the guy, he came up and he tried to run. Mm -hmm. And I'm looking like, dang, I should have did this. So, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. what I'm saying? But everybody else like, yeah, you yeah, body you that. Yeah. And I'm like, nah, man, I could have, dang, I could have did this. You know what I'm saying? Even like there's a scene with my sister, right, when she died, right? Mm. I'm like, man, I wish she would have zoomed in a little bit more. Like, yeah. you really caught it, you Yo, know what I'm saying? Man, them ain't, bro. Them ain't, bro. It was, but the crazy part about it, people don't understand how hard it is to get those type of angles. Bro, you were, you were shooting outside of the car. Yeah, like, and, and, and it's just the timing of... Cause you gotta think though, like at at one point we was just like we took our time. But at the same time, it was like, all right, if we do got enough, then let's just let's, let's just, just run yeah, with let's it. Let's run what we got. Cause, cause you know now, like I was telling Jay, I'm like, man, now, bro, it's like, all right, cause we we had a mixture of old footage with new footage. So when we start filming again, it's gonna be like, all right, if we can have a proper time and set everything up. Mm -hmm. I mean, and, and that's nothing against nobody, but it's just like. What if we just actually had the precise time, get the exactly. angles and, that, and stuff? And, and that's we what go, it takes. But fitting all now is solid. Go check it out. You know, everybody. Please but, go check it out. It's, it's, it's fire. But yeah, you know but, what I'm saying? but yeah, but people don't really understand. Like, you know, like With we all watching it as a, yeah, it's mm -hmm. like, you know, damn, we should have did that. And I think it's a, a lot of people that probably said that, but the outcome was like, it's a dope ass project. Man, Um, I want to, uh, what was another question I had? Um, But not, so going back to Terry the Voice though, that did take you a lot of places, though. Yeah. So let's talk about just like you said, you you did the um the competitions. I remember you were telling me about the Steve Harvey thing. Yeah, that the crazy part about that man, that it, it literally fell on my lap, right? So at that time, um, I was doing a lot of auditions for like commercials, stuff like that. Yeah. So my name was kind of already in, in the circuit per mm -hmm. se. Out of the blue, I just get a phone call, and the crazy part about it, people really know me. I don't answer calls if the name is not on there. And if it's a long distance number, I'm not answering. Yeah, period. <laughs> People know, if you know me, you know that about me. And I remember sitting in my apartment. I was living in the one bedroom apartment, one of the one apartments where the bathroom is through the bedroom. Like mm -hmm. you got to go through the bedroom to get to get the bathroom. bathroom. That's how yeah. small the apartment is. And and I'm chilling. Matter of fact, I'm going to tell you exactly what I was doing. I was drawing. Mm. I was... Um, the landlord was like, you can do whatever you want. You just got to paint the walls back. I had literally saw this picture of like some hands coming together. And I just put it on my wall. I drew it free handed on the wall. You talking about the one joint? Like with the finger. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> okay. I drew that on my wall. The crazy part about it, I just deleted it off my Instagram today. Uh, the actual the actual drawing that yeah, you did? Yeah. Oh, man. Like this, uh, <laughs> I got a friend of mine. She was like, uh, you got too many Instagram posts. <laughs> What? She was like, "You gotta dumb that down. You gotta, 
What, what, I mean, what? Too many just miscellaneous posts? Yeah, maybe? just posts. Like she was like, put that. She like you supposed to put stuff like she like that type of thing right there should have been on your story. Oh, she, she, like, that should have made a post. That should have been on the story. And I was like, so then I started looking at other. Okay, pages. that do kind of make sense. Though. I'll be right. doing that sometimes. So then I started looking post at worthy, other, story yeah. worthy, and then I started looking at other people's page a little bit. You know, and, and you know, she probably gonna see this and be like, I told you so. Mm. But I had started looking at other, like even like famous people, yeah, or people that I knew that was starting to, you know, and I'm looking like, dang, yeah, they only got like 300 posts or yeah. 50 some posts or 70 some posts, bro. I had like 2,000. Yeah, you was putting over all the years. Up. Yeah, you know what I'm saying. So bro, I just start going deleting, 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 deleting. You know what I'm saying. I think I got it down to like 500 or something now. You know what I'm saying. I mean, because you know, Instagram now is our resume, so it gotta look. So that's how I, I make sure I precisely put up this either a quality picture, some some might make it just on you know for the you know just the for memorabilia. The moment, yeah. You know, I want to keep it on my page in case I lose it on my phone or yeah. stories delete after. But nah, but yeah, that makes yeah. sense. So yeah, though. so that's that's you know. So that that was the crazy part of that, like just, you know, just trying to figure out that man. But like, that we almost missed the question. No, nah, yeah. So you said um, you don't answer calls, yeah, and you was so, drawing. Yeah. So I'm drawing. Phone call come in. I see it, and the first thing I did was just put the phone down, mm. and got back to drawing. And then I looked at it again, and I was like, man, it was called from Chicago. Mm. Answer the phone. I'm like, hello. She's like, is this Terry Matthews? I'm like, yes, it is. She's like, all right, well, um, listen, I'm just real quick. Don't want to take too much of your time. Um, we're having a audition, and we would like for you to send in a video um, of what you think about Steve Harvey's book. And, you know, best, you know, we're going to pick the top, whatever. And, you know. I think like a man? Yeah, uh, act like a woman, think like a man. Yeah, 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 my bad. Yeah, I think a girl is. And, and it was like, I'm like, okay. She was like, yeah. So, and at this time, I had never read the book. To be not, completely honest. Not nothing. <laughs> and she was like, so. Oh, but you got called because you was in the circuit of. Yeah. Yeah. And so she was like, so ha have you read it? I said, oh, yeah, yeah, I read it. Absolutely. You know what I'm saying? Goddamn. And she was like, all right, well, look, great. Send us a video. I think the video couldn't be longer than one minute or something like that. And she's like, just send us, you know, give your feedback on the, on the book. Yeah. Immediately, I went to Google, pulled the book up, went back to the end of the book to kind of get the. The, just the, the overview book. of yeah. it. <laughs> and then I made the video. You know what I'm saying? I did a video. I'm like, man, Steve Harvey, man, you, you you set us up. You know what I'm saying? You you give them you giving them the women the playbook, you know what I'm saying? And you, yeah. you you selling out on us, Steve. You selling out on us. And I'm like, dang, is this enough? And I just sent it. Hey, say I, that, right? I didn't I don't didn't, even second guess it. I like, didn't this second shit going. guess it. I just <laughs> sent it. Very next day, get a call. Same number. I answered. She was like, hey. She was like, I'm not even going to beat around the bush. She was like, because I'm not supposed to like give it this information this early. Mm -hmm. She's like, because they're stages. She's like, but you're you're coming on the Steve Harvey show. Period. She's like, you have by far the best video we've seen so far. Hey. And I'm like, really? She's like, yeah. She was like, um, what's your email address? Gave her my email address. She's already be expecting an email um, with all the details. Once again, congratulations! You'll be on the Steve Harvey show. She, yeah. she hang up. No second guessing. Slept Hour that bitch later, fly. I get an email. Full itinerary. Full. I'm talking about this is the day you leaving. This you getting you catching this flight. They mm -hmm. gonna pick you up from the hotel. Boom, boom, boom. The whole list. I'm looking like this is real. Yeah. This is about to go down. And I remember making Facebook posts, and I didn't tell people exactly what it was. I just said, man, just know. It's about to go it's down. Going down. <laughs> I just got the phone call of my life. And in, in that experience was one of the best experiences of my life. I'm talking about get to the airport, boom, get on my name. Oh, here go your ticket. Da, 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 da. I get on the plane. I get off the plane. I get to Chicago. I get off into the airport, walk through guys, you know, like on the movies, guys sitting there got holding the up the sign. Yeah, I had that happen to me once. And I'm looking like, oh, this shit is real. Yeah. It's going down. So boom, yeah, and at this time I'm broke. Like I'm broke. Hey, like, some, some of my best experiences of living was traveling with. But, no but money. I'm broke, and I'm, I remember I called Marlon Shackleford. I said, "Hey, I got the greatest opportunity." I said, "I mean, they pay for everything, but I'm still broke. Like, how I'm gonna yeah. eat? How I'm gonna do this?" He was like, "Don't worry about it. I got you, man. I went, 
We step outside, big boy limousine. Yeah. They put me in limousine. They drive me to the hotel. I get to the hotel, big boy hotel. And I've I've had the experience now, but back then to be able to do that, and I walk in my hotel, name going across the screen and A1 service, man. I'm looking like and the little stuff that they asked me, what did I like? It's in the hotel. I'm talking yeah, about rider. Man, I had my Skittles, I, I had my side <laughs> patches, and I'm like, my my they had me, I had a uh I never forget it was a um a uh, uh, case of six of uh, bottled Pepsi. The whole I'm like, hey, bro, this is it. Yeah, I could do this for the rest of my <laughs> life, and it was just a beautiful experience. Went on the show, and the crazy part about it, I was already doing my my talk show, the Pulse Talk Show. I was already doing it here in Dayton. Yeah, hadn't made TV or nothing like that. I was just doing it, like letting people come doing the show. So now my mindset now is I'm going on here and I'm going to see how they running this because I want to go back to Dayton and run my and show. Attitude. How, and that's what I did. I took notes the entire time. Mm -hmm. Like how long this took, how long that took, preparation, everything. Yeah. Wrote it down and came back and started doing my show the same way. But while I was there, you know, Steve came back there, met us, shook our hands. We was able to wrap it up with him and have fun. And then when the show started, man, Terry the Voice came out. And I mean, you know, you'll see the clips, you know, if you haven't seen them, like immediately, bro, like we had to go in line and, and it was crazy. Like, so we we're backstage. So it hyped me up so much because it was right before they went to a commercial break and Steve like, all right, next we're going to, you know, you know, we're going to talk about act like a woman, think like a man. And I got some guys who got something to say about the book yeah. and you know, but it's one, it's one special character. It's one special person I want to bring out to this stage. It. What made y'all watch this clip? And they showed the clip of my audition video. Yeah. And I'm sitting there like, <laughs> Energized. Oh, I'm, not, I'm really pumped. Yeah. I'm like, I'm, I'm that pumped that's right before you come out of the basketball game, like, let's go. Yeah. I'm like, yeah. Even the guys, and they were showing me love because other guys that was, you know, that was part of it, they was like, hey, bro, that was, hey, let's get it. And they, we came out on stage. They said us right where they want to sit. And they set me right beside Steve. So we was like in a line. And then Steve sat in his, like, a, I was like a bar stool and he sat there and <laughs> he had a little table, had a little coffee and we had, all had to go in line and say who we were, where we was from and then something else about the book. Yeah. And then it got to me the last one. <laughs> and I, and the cra I don't know what made me stand up. Like I legit stood up to Steve. Everybody like, else is everybody sat sitting down. down. Just sitting down. Yeah. I was like, bro, I stood up looking right at I said, bro, you, you broke the man code, Steve. <laughs> and just said what I had, and I Probably went with it. Uproar with the, from the crowd. And I, I'm talking about hearing people got to laughing, clapping. Steve even laughed. He started cracking up laughing. And he uh he told me, he said, man, don't 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 let this cup fool you. I can use it for more than just drinking. <laughs> and, you know, we had a nice laugh about it, man. And the show, the rest of the show was phenomenal. You know what I'm saying? And he he and I could tell he gave me one of them like one hand shake hugs at the end, like Yeah. yeah. You did it. Yeah. Yeah. And I never forget it. You know what I'm saying? And ever since then, I think that's another one of the reasons why I approach everything with excellence. You know what I'm saying? Because you just never know who watching. You never know, never know what opportunity you're going to get. Yep. And you got you every moment like the last. Yeah. And yep. so, you Seize know, every opportunity. And I try yep. to body it, man. So then I, you know, I do what I do. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So, yeah, man. So that, you know, Tear the Voice put me on the Steve Harvey show. Um, I've been in plays uh, with Jack A from 227, mm -hmm. Bruh Man from Martin, uh, a couple other things, man. It's just, you know, it's all God, you know what I'm saying? Absolutely. But, you know, yeah, it was it was the Terry the Voice personality, you know, coming out that put me in, you know, different, you know, spotlights and on stage with different people that I would have never thought I would have. You yeah. know what I'm saying? I, I did a comedy show on a limb. It was crazy. I was in Vegas for one thing, auditioning for... um insurance commercial and i knew i wasn't gonna get it because they were looking for somebody who you had to live there pretty much right but i'm like i'm just gonna go do it anyway fuck it see where it goes while i was there cracking jokes at the bar and this guy was like dude you funny as hell and i said man you know i crack a couple jokes man well then they, they turned into a conversation of what i did in dayton mm -hmm. told him my whole shows you know i do a little comedy or whatever case may be and he was like what you doing tomorrow why are you in Vegas with something totally different? Yeah, and I was like, man, I ain't, I mean, I'm, 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 I'm chilling. I said, honestly, I, honestly, I got an audition in the morning. After that, it's whatever. You know what I'm saying? He was like, look, tomorrow night I got a spot. I want you to come do comedy. He said, you're only going to get like 
max five minutes. He said, you might get like three to five minutes. He said, you just flat out just the opener, just a quick little boom. Mm. He said, but the show is for Eddie Griffin. Oh, yeah. Run it. I said, let's go. <laughs> Period. I didn't get paid. No, I didn't even get a free drink. Uh, but yeah, I'm like, literally hey. just the opener. Yeah, I'm like, let's go. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And it was at the Rio. I'll never mm. forget. And he was like, I'm putting you on. He's like, don't disappoint me. You better show up. I'm like, man, I'm there. I'm like, what time you need me there? Yeah. He's like, I need you at five. Opening for Eddie Griffin? I said, I'm there. On a limb? On a limb. Yeah. Right, went, killed it for a hot three minutes and a half. Yeah, Good just, enough. Killed it. <laughs> and I, didn't, I didn't get to meet Eddie Griffin. It was like, you know, he... He, he probably went back door in yeah, and out. Yeah. Doing his thing. Because it, like, it wasn't like no major big show. It was like at the Rio, literally maybe like max, max 100 people in there. Uh, yeah, so probably just a little pass through type yeah. thing, yeah. And boom, and that's that's how it was, and you know. And but once again, it's just being in the right place, right time. Mm -hmm. You know what I'm saying? Allowing myself to be available and being you, and being me, yeah. And then allow those type of opportunities. You know what I'm saying? So, yep. you know, so man, but I've man, I've met a lot of people. I'd, uh, who else? Uh, Tank. Um, I, I host for Tank before singer. Yeah, yeah. Here, I also host for him here, him in Dayton. Uh, before we, uh, cause we did a uh, karaoke competition. Yeah, and the winner got to open up for him. Oh shit! But and I, then, <laughs> but I, I host the whole event, so got to meet him. Uh, he was a little rude though. What just? Yeah, <laughs> he was a little rude guy. You know what I'm saying? He was cool, but when it came down to the business aspect of it, mm. nah. Uh, like just straight to it, like to it. yeah. You know, you know, where I ain't doing nothing until where the bag at, where the back yeah. end. And, that, and that's and I get it. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, but it's different ways you go about yeah, it, man. Yeah, it's just because they, they so busy and it's in and out and boom, boom, boom. Like he came in and he was just on some cool. Like, hey, what's going on, everybody? Whoa, whoa. I think he, his people like bought a. I don't know if they bought the bottle or the club gave him the bottle. I don't know, mm. but he shared it. I got some of it. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> uh, but he didn't want to have no conversation. Yeah, didn't want to talk. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. And, that, that's crazy. That'd give you a different perspective if you are a fan of them. Just like like you said, a little rude. It, but but you knowing the business is understandable. Understand why, why you might understand. But somebody else is yeah. fuck like, tank. Like, man, cause they were putting salty. Now, don't get me wrong. After the show, he allowed a couple ladies to come back there and kick it with him. You know what I'm saying? I think he chilled max 30 minutes. Yeah. Boom, drink, uh, laugh, a couple jokes. Got up out of there. Probably the you know best thirty minutes they'll never forget. Yeah, to them, that was the best thirty minutes of their life. Yeah. To me, it was like I wanted more mm -hmm. because I wanted to talk business. I wanted to talk, man. What do I pick your do? brain? Yeah. yeah. Like, let me you get some saying? insight. Get all the other stuff. I don't. Want, I don't even want to take a picture with you. Yeah. I want to pick your brain. That's the valuable. Yeah. Part and, I, of, and, and, yeah and that's where I'm like, dang, I wish. You know what I'm saying? Like, I done met so many celebrities and never took a picture with them. Me too. You know what I'm saying? Because. I live in the moment, and my living in the moment is I want to get everything I can get out of this to better myself, not to be able to post a picture on social media. Everything, every moment, every it doesn't require like I mean, a mental memory is just as good as if you was to take a picture. The, the crazy part about it, my ex hit me and asked me. She said, "Hey, you know, for our daughter to school, they want a picture of you and her together," mm. and I couldn't find one. Mm. And I'm like, when we together, I I take pictures of her of her doing something. But I'm not like, come here, let's take this picture so I can post it. Right, right. Like, and I legit went back like a whole year and couldn't find one picture. I get of that, me and though. my daughter together. Because like, you capturing her memories come growing up. Yeah, whereas. But, and, I, and I'm not thinking about it from a standpoint of, come on, let me, you know, let me take this picture of us together and mm -hmm. then post it. You know what I'm saying? Or let me just keep it from my memory bank or none of that. It's just when I went, when, when she come over and we having fun, it may be we in the backyard hula hooping. Like, she love to see me hula hoop. Yeah. Even though I can't do it, but still, but, but, you, but you in the, but you living in the moment yeah, so of there's that. There's no phone in my hand, right? You know what I'm saying? And then when she likes to blow bubbles, so when she blowing bubbles, yeah, I'm taking a picture of that. Mm -hmm. Once again, I'm still not. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm so in the moment. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So once when that happened, and then now I think about this, I I see why I don't have pictures with the celebrities and stuff like that because I'm in the moment for a different reason. You yeah, know what I'm and and I put a different stigma too of like. What are you really trying to talk to me for? Just to say you met me, right. or are yeah. you really trying to get what I know about yeah, it and, put, and add it to yeah. you? Yeah, yeah so, nah, that makes sense. Yeah, so it's just crazy, man. But you know, just like once again, Terry the voice been put in places because I've been me. Right. You know what I'm saying? My personality, 
I, I'm an easy going person. Anybody can talk to me. Now, I'm not an asshole. You know what mm-hmm. I'm saying? And and it just it put me in platforms that most was like, man, how did you? How was you able to be there? How was you able to do this? Yeah. So it's just a blessing. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. You know, Terry, Terry the Voice then opened up some doors, and but Terry the Voice then shut up, shut some doors too. Yeah. You, know you got to be the right. I mean, you've done us alone. Got to be the right, right opportunity, the right feeling, the right excitement. Like you know, it's the platform. Like Terry the Voice is, you know, everybody gets to the point where it's like. Shit, you stepping stones, stepping stones. You just want something that's going, you know, fulfill you. Yeah, yeah. Man. So you know, I'm, I'm I'm with hosting events, but like you, like we talked about, man. Just you know, I'm looking for bigger things now. Yeah, you know what I'm saying longevity you know, too. Longevity stuff. You know what I'm saying, and, and it's coming because I, you know, I, I, I'm a dreamer. You know, it's crazy. You change the dreams. Dreamers welcome dreamer. podcast. But yeah, I legit, bro, have dreams that come true. Yeah, like real life. I mean, like real life. Like, and I think that's kind of God's way of showing me to keep my faith. And you're doing the right thing. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. He will allow me to have dreams that actually really come true. Yeah. Sometimes good, sometimes bad. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And, you know, and I've had some dreams lately of me doing some amazing things. You know what I'm saying? So it, it does, you know, keep that hope alive that something going to happen. For sure. You know what I'm saying? Because, you know, he's allowing me to have these dreams. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? So some things are coming. And then on the acting end, man, just, you know, like I said, I'm going to go more hard on that a little harder in the paint on the act in these next couple of years man and just see what doors can open up and see what can happen yeah because I, mean, I, I got a couple like two projects i'm gonna need a small cast on obviously with jason you know and any other opportunities i know because that's that's what we want like people watching it hey who who played the cops it's in the credits bro right like wherever it come from man all right so before we wrap up man you might already answered it but what's a good quote or a piece of advice that you live off of Mm, a couple of them. Uh, make your next step your best step. Right on. Um, that one. Um, um, a slogan that I use for my talk show. You know what I'm saying? Um, be the boss of your city, the voice for the people, and the one to make a difference. Boss of your, boss of your city. Pulse. Who? Be the pulse of your city, like the heartbeat. Oh, the pulse. So the pulse of your city. Be the pulse of your city, the voice, voice for, for the people. people. And the one to make a difference. Oh yeah, that's clutch. You know I had to so, run that back. <laughs> yeah, so it's been that's 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 always my slogan when I do my talk show. Um, you know, and I, I do my show and I look right in the camera and I tell them to be that. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Because you, you have to be the heartbeat. You know what I'm saying? It's so many things going on in a negative way. There's some great things going on in a positive way, but who is gonna genuinely be the heartbeat that's gonna keep it going? Yeah, for you know sure. It, and, it, it's needed. And absolutely. Who gonna speak for the people that's afraid to speak or can't speak? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Or are you gonna be the voice for the people? You know what I'm saying? Then lastly, are you going to be the one to make a difference? There's Dang. no point of doing all these things if we're not going to make a difference. You know what I'm saying? Like, if there's no point of me acting and then make it on a, on a, a big stage if I don't take the next person mm-hmm. and bring them with me. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Then what are we doing it for? Yeah. You know what I'm saying? You know, because money can only last for so long. Fame can only last for so long. You know what I'm saying? If I can't be like, hey, you know, I want to take you with me. I won't. I'm a, if I know you can sing, and I'm on. The, I'm in an environment. They was like, man, we got to get a singer. I got the perfect person. I'm already ready. Yeah. I already know who I'm gonna call. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? And if I'm not doing that for somebody, then whatever happens off that opportunity is what happens off the opportunity. But if I'm not doing that, you know what I'm saying? Am I being the one that's making a difference? No. I'm just being the one that's out for me. You know what I'm saying? You got to be the one that's gonna make a difference. You know what I'm saying? And especially in a positive way. And that's just that's kind of what I stand on. That's what I live for. You know what I'm saying? And and, and, I, and that's how I'm living my life. I'm making my next step my best step. You know what I'm saying? I'm being the heartbeat. I'm being the voice. And I'm being the one to make a difference. Let's and, go. and if I'm not doing those four, then, you know, most definitely I'm not doing what I'm called to do. Exactly. Man, great fucking answer, you know man. Saying? Hell yeah. All right, man. I appreciate you, man. Fitting all. Please, bro. He's in it. We got more coming. Dreamers Welcome Podcast. Y'all keep dreaming and we are out. Dreamers Welcome Podcast.